The seven deadly sins, or also referred to as the cardinal sins, are a classification of specific human tendencies that one is to avoid in order to live a more fulfilling life that leads you closer to God. While being closely associated with Christian teachings but not being mentioned in the Bible directly, there are many works of literature and fiction that include characters that have or just outright exhibit the seven deadly sins themselves. And so I figured with how expansive the lore is and with how many characters and different personality types there are in Destiny, could I make a list of seven characters that exhibit these seven deadly sins? Now before we even get started, I will add admit that some of these were harder than others. For example, the sin of envy and sloth really had me stumped. I had to go back and change pride a couple of times, but I did try to get this list as close as possible. Oh, and by the way, I understand that there are some characters out there that are really fleshed out in the lore or even characters that we've seen outright. Characters like Callus, for example, embody many of these sins all in one. However, I did just try to confine him to one position to leave room for the others here on this list. With that being said, if you do enjoy today's video, hit that subscribe button. And let's begin with the sin of pride. Pride is a sin that, as humans, we should know very well. After all, it is the primary reason that the once beloved angel Lucifer fell from heaven like lightning. So what character in Destiny would you say befits such a title as Sin of Pride? Well, my pick is Clovis Bray the First. Clovis Bray is a character who is accredited with multiple groundbreaking technological advancements such as the Exos, Siva, and the Warmines. These achievements would give something to Clovis that one would call a big head. As a matter of fact, that's an understatement. Clovis, towards the end of his life, started to suffer from delusions of grandeur. He would fill his diaries with the proclamation of becoming the Luca, or last universal common ancestor, to all future interstellar humans and their civilizations. Which is so unbelievably absurd. For those of you who don't know what Luca is, even though I just told you what it is technically, with a little bit more context in biology, the last universal common ancestor is hypothesized three domains of life first originated from. So he's basically writing down that he's going to be the reason pretty much why all future life is living. He was also very prideful in his family, House Bray, so much so that he was known to micromanage the lives of his family members, even somewhat resenting his adoptive granddaughter, Anna Bray, due to her genetics. He would also find his grandson Alton Bray's genetics very useless, relegating him to a mere troubleshooter. But that's enough of pride. Let's go down to greed. Now this is a sin that I feel fits a lot of characters in Destiny, but none as much as the guardian known as Wilhelm Seven. Now this might have been a bit of a sleeper pick, but I feel like this fits very perfectly. Wilhelm's story, as told through his audio logs found within the Grasp of Avarice dungeon, also seemed to agree. Wilhelm was a guardian who ventured into the Grasp of Avarice dungeon underneath the old loot cave. He traveled there with his fire team Agadir and Pershing. A little bit into their journey, they discovered a horde of engrams and glimmer. However, it wouldn't take very long for the feeling of greed to ultimately consume the entire fire team, which caused them to ultimately turn on each other, with Wilhelm seemingly getting the worst of it, as he witnessed his hunter teammate Agadir shoot Pershing's ghost and ultimately kill Pershing. However, Wilhelm wasn't really sad about his death. After all, if there's less guardians, more loot comes his way. Not too long after this, Agadir's ghost was murdered by Wilhelm, and then Agadir was forced to carry Wilhelm's treasure. He would eventually push Agadir off a 30 meter drop when he caught Agadir trying to steal his treasure. Wilhelm's ghost Bismarck would then follow suit after he got totally baited into healing Wilhelm after he purposefully shot himself in the leg, but he ended up killing his ghost before he could heal the wound. So after he killed his ghost, he was just there, bleeding, trying to continue on and find more treasure. He would ultimately die in this place, with us finding his body after we defeat the final boss. Now we're going to move on to the sin of wrath. I feel like the Destiny character that most embodies this is Rolk. Now we briefly touched over Rolk's origin almost a year ago at this point, back when we did a power scale for the character. And for those of you who remember that video or just remember the lore in general, you'll know that his psychopathic tendencies and his rage at times are very understandable. Rolk hails from the planet known as Lubre, and specifically comes from a tribe called the Wanderers. The people of Lubre once worshipped the Traveler, but when it left, it caused a whirlwind-like event. This would ultimately end up separating the people into two different groups, one that's known as the Regime, these guys would live in the inner city of the planet, and the other group known as the Wanderers, who lived on the outskirts mostly. There was also the Regime's military power called the Stalkers, who would hunt and kill the Wanderers. Rolk's father would often make him watch the murder of his people by the hand of the Stalkers, which fueled his bloodlust and 
his rage. So from a very early age, Rolk witnessing these murders would ultimately develop not only a lust for battle, but also wrathful tendencies. This was especially the case after he found out that his father defected from the Wanderers to join the regime. There was a time where Rolk ripped his small pet in half and stood over it triumphantly. There were times where he expressed his anger through battle, killing stalkers with his glaive. He would even go on to blow up his planet's host star, ultimately annihilating his people. These wrathful tendencies are the reason why I have Rolk in this position. But let's move on to Envy. Now at first, the sin of Envy was very hard to assign to any character, actually. Envy and Sloth, at least, were the ones that gave me the most trouble. However, through the many characters that exist in Destiny, only one really stood out, and that was Aldrin Sov. Not Crow, but that of his past life. A lot of people may or may not know that Aldrin Sov was very jealous and envious of Guardians. It was said if given the chance to torment a Guardian, he would take it faster than you could say Rasputin shot the Traveler. It was an option that he lobs into Guardians' minds whenever he could. He would even refer to the Guardians as the Traveler's Horseflies. Some of the reasoning for his envy had to do with his ties towards the Reef and to Queen Marasov. He was envious of the Guardians and the fact that they could move through the world without even understanding it or ever having to. This sort of seems similar to how Hunter Vanguards go against their nature to want to be free and explore on their own, to be confined to the monotonous duties of the Tower. It's a shame that Aldrin had such a disdain for Guardians because I feel like him and Cade, or really any other Hunter, would have found common ground on this one subject, maybe even more. Sticking in the family line, we'll move on to Lust. And for this sin, I have Aldrin's sister, Mara Sav. There are very few characters in Destiny that are as sexualized as Mara Sav, or even have as many sexual scandals as the Queen herself, with her not only having been implied to have slept with Shax, the Crucible Headmaster, but before that, she was also in a relationship with the Queen's Wrath, Sheer Ido. Funny enough, Sheer Ido and Shax actually met each other once, which ended up in Shax's death. After that, they actually became really good friends. And of course, we find all this out through the recluse lore tab, or at least the old one. But enough of lust. Let's move on to the next sin known as gluttony. I feel like all of you guys, whenever you hear this word and think about destiny, all pretty much have the same answer. The definition of gluttony is habitual greed or excess in eating. And there are a couple of other characters that come into mind, yes, but there are no other characters in destiny that quite fit this description, quite like Emperor Callus. Emperor Callus was the former cabal emperor before he was then overthrown in the midnight coup by Dominus Gaul, his daughter Keitel, and instead of executing him, Keitel decided to exile him to a place called the Leviathan, which is a planet eater. Kallus would actually use the Leviathan to consume planets and grind their soil into dust to mix with spores from flowers in the pleasure gardens to create royal wine. He would then consume this royal wine, which would give him psionic abilities. His own daughter, Keitel, would even compare him to a ravenous war beast, one who was hungry for power or to be greater. After he was exiled to the Leviathan, he caught a glimpse of the witness and he wanted nothing else but that, relentlessly chasing after it until the witness finally gave what he searched for, which was a new perfected state of being. If you seek the means to live your potential, I can guide you to it. There is power in the universe beyond your feeble light. I leave you with those words and these parting gifts. Take them and grow fat from strength, Emperor Callus has spoken. Callus was another one of these characters that really could have embodied a lot of the other sins. Things like pride for sure, definitely greed. Surprisingly enough, I didn't see it right to put Callus into this last position and the final sin that we are coming upon, the sin of sloth. The seventh sin of sloth is probably the hardest to define because of the fact that it not only has to do with the physical state that you're in, but also your mental state. Most importantly, stemming from the care of yourself, leading toward your apathetic actions, or lack thereof, of your surrounding environment. Like I said before, this is the one that was really really hard because there's not a lot of characters in Destiny that really exhibit sloth. Most characters, villains and heroes alike, have motives as to why they're doing what they're doing and they work tirelessly sometimes for those goals ultimately achieving them, whether it be Rolk in his endless desire to please the witness or the witness himself and trying to enact the final shape, chasing the traveler across the cosmos for eons or even the hive, which due to the worms inside of them would actually kill them if they were ever slothful in any way towards feeding them. However, there are one group of entities that stood out just a little bit, at least for me, and they are the Nine. The Nine were originally just dark matter that were given consciousness by the Nine planets that are in the solar system. 
In fact, they are so tied to the life that's in the solar system that each one of them represents the nine planets that make up the solar system. However, the nine truly didn't awaken until sentient life formed on Earth, which then gave them sentience. There are two factions that are currently within the nine. The first faction actually wants to preserve life and also wants to help us protect ourselves. They do this by sending emissaries like Xur to sell us powerful weapons. However, the second faction wants very desperately to get away from the reliance that they have of the solar system. The reason I I have the Nine at Sloth is because we know very little about them and the stuff that we do know doesn't really seem to be much of any help to us Guardians or to the universe other than Xur directly selling us powerful weapons. They don't do anything to help stop threats of the solar system and that's pretty much because they can't, seemingly because dark matter cannot regularly interact with regular matter which is why they use emissaries. As a matter of fact, some of the stuff that they do might cause more harm than good. One member of the Nine even blinded Guardians to the approach of Gaul, which led to the Red War, and us not seeing it coming until it was too late. The reason being was because Gaul would have destroyed the sun trying to get after the Traveler's Light, which would have ultimately killed the Nine. Now look, I'll admit, if you see this one as a bit of a stretch, I don't blame you. However, if you have a better pick for any character that would fit on this list, definitely let me know in the comments. With that being said, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, hit that like button. If you want more content similar to this, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one. Sub up, stay safe, and peace.